And last time that we gathered, the party had continued a fight from the session before that one. And they met their adversaries, being a frost mage, a thaumaturgist, two demons. One demon wearing a mask and a strange assortment of armor. The other one being called, before they learned his name, being an envy demon, but he was green, tall, almost Hulk-like for those who enjoy the Marvel series. And as that battle continued on, the green demon, the envy demon, decided that after being swung around like a wrecking ball by Yashua, he decided that he wasn't going to fight them anymore because he perceived the party to be, in his words, fun. And that, as Mask stated, neither of them were fighting for their own reasons, and they were summoned because someone else decided to make their problem theirs. So, as a result of the Envy Demon deciding he didn't want to fight anymore, he very quickly grabbed the Frost Mage by the head and turned his head into a pancake, thus ending his life. And the Thaumaturgist was in the process of preparing a pretty nasty flare spell, but once he quickly realized that the odds were no longer in his favor, he attempted to run away, of which his efforts were thwarted by Yashua, vaulting over some debris in his way, and taking off at breakneck speed, tackling him to the ground, and rendering his legs completely useless. As that was taking place, Yashua noticed an Ignis Shard uh, quickly on the way of falling out of the Thaumaturge's uh, shoulder pocket, to which he then summoned Xander, so that Xander could take care of them. But, the Thaumaturge didn't just have the one, he had four. One of which was on his person. The other three were in his skull. So after a bit of Xander gorging himself and traumatizing the poor bastard, the English was taken care of, Xander got himself a nice meal, and the group made their way back to the temporary base of operations that Zero has set up. Along them joined the demons that were their enemies at first, but decided to join their side for a time being. Demons' names were officially Raphael and Mask, as Mask said that he would not tell them their actual name for the time being. <clears throat> Once everyone made it back, uh, they were greeted by a couple of soldiers, Zero drew his weapon at the side of an unfamiliar figure, entering into the space, and Perry asked the group where they all came from, to which her question was answered as best as the group could possibly answer them. And last session, we ended off with Yashua asking Roselia about a pink vial of liquid, to which she explained was something called an elixir, which... Long summary short, is a liquid that will heal all physical injuries, all and any form of physical sicknesses, and, if you are capable of using magic, being back to full magical capacity. And from there, our story will continue. Alrighty then. So this pink liquid is essentially a wonder drug. Heals everything. Right. Cool. Yeah, um... If you want... Probably not right now because you all look very tired from today's activities, operations, and such. But I can teach you how to make them. If, if you want, anyway. Uh, yeah. 
I would appreciate that, but it's better that we first get this operation out of the way before we learn some, I don't know, complicated alchemy, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. And, uh, when the Brazilia finishes her sentence, Zero clears his throat. <clears throat> yeah, about that. Uh, you guys need to sleep. We, you've been running around ragged until the bone ever since you've been up. And if this is going to be any degree of successful, we need you and well, everyone else in tip-top condition. Curses. He looks at Henry. Withheld. And Drava, um, she... She doesn't say anything, but she begins to stretch from where she is standing. And if you want... You may roll perception to hear her bones and joints cracking from stress. Let's see. Perception, you said? Yep. Oh. There we go. Alright. Uh, well, she's not too far away where you can't hear her. You're close enough to... Hear a couple of shoulder pops, her back crack, and you can see the physical tension slowly being removed off of her with every individual stretch she takes. You know what, Zero? I think I, uh, I think I'm gonna take you up on that offer. I, regular people shouldn't be cracking this much. <laughs> wonder if I wonder if there's a bathhouse nearby. A what? Zero says to you. A bathhouse. What's that? Cynthia speaks up. He's talking about a spa, right? Yeah. Yeah, see? Uh, I don't know. I don't... I don't go to those. Cynthia speaks of... God, you're... You're so hopeless. Uh, there's one at the hotel... Uh, Chief hooks you guys up with... Uh, it's, it's gonna cost you per person, but, yeah, we've, there's one there, you can go in for as long as you want, and, uh, yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's a spa, I don't really know what else you want to know, I guess. Cost isn't the issue here. You can't have proper rest without your body actually resting, and a bathhouse is a good way to do it. Well, I'm off to go find one. You said the hotel, right? Yeah. Oh boy! As you... Oh. Wait, I'm assuming you're actually about to leave the building right yep okay yep. <laughs> as you do that uh, a couple of agents walk by you carrying uh, a few a few briefcases and they approach them and say sir we found these cases uh, sitting outside of the door we examine the contents and nothing appears to be harmful in them Okay. New equipment. Um. Warren. Somebody left cases outside of the building just like that. 
Right, what what Yashua said. You don't think that's uh, highly suspicious? <laughs> and his fingers start twitching. <laughs> Again, uh, what Yashua said. Why did you bring them here? I'm gonna go leave the building before this place explodes. No, I want to see what's inside. <laughs> Zero was. Zero is eyeing the agents that are holding the suitcases, and his left eye is twitching just a bit. You said you examined the contents. What exactly does that mean? Uh, sir, we checked for any dangerous explosives or chemicals or magical traps. And we found none, sir. Okay. That still doesn't answer the question of why you thought to bring them to me. What even you is in them? them? Not scan them? Who's training these people? Uh, one of the agents says that... Uh, I scanned the containers, and my associate physically looked at everything. And sir, we we can guarantee without a shadow of a doubt there is nothing dangerous within them. I'm just eyeing these guys suspiciously. So is uh, so is zero. Okay. Henry, can Henry call over Raphael to check the content? Just in case it's a trap. Oh yeah, let the demon explode. Yeah, he, he he won't get hurt from it. I mean, he will. He, uh, wait, uh, Riku, remind me. Drink. Riku, remind me. They can't die in our realm, right? I didn't say they couldn't die. But like it. But like that's another way to send them to hell, right? Or no? They kind of want to die. Well, they want to go home. For Mask, he said, send me home, but you don't have to kill me in order to do it. Oh, okay. Okay, Raphael's coming to help us out on this. Okay, please okay. roll Persuasion. Yeah, let's let Raphael open these cases. Actually, do I have to persuade Perfect! him? Perfect! <laughs> okay. Wow, that's a... <laughs> nice okay. nat 20 on that. <laughs> okay, I was gonna, like, ask, do I have to persuade him so I could just give him another oh, barrel of alcohol? my best friend, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, well, here, here's how this was gonna play out, right? If either of you rolled a nat 1, I was going to say that it's going to take two barrels of alcohol instead of one to, can, to bypass the roll to get him over. But if you got a regular roll that was above a, a <clears throat> above a fourteen, he would have just came over with one barrel. But since you're nat twenty, he's uh, my best friend. You can uh, say say what you were going to say to get him to come over and examine them. Uh, hey buddy, come here. I need some help. <laughs> uh, help with what exactly? the contents of these just in case anything uh sure can i place a shining word on myself while this is happening <laughs> <laughs> sure why not all right i'm gonna place a shining word on the most important characters including I myself Henry, so, the Tamer of Demons. <laughs> so, I place a Shining Word on myself. Okay. I'm gonna place it on Dreva, and Dreva Shining Word could cover, like, these group here. I'm gonna give one a zero. So, I'm gonna tell, uh, Cynthia here to stand beside, uh, uh, fucking zero over there. Okay. Uh, let me set up the barriers real fast. Well, Henry doesn't get one because he, he has demons. <laughs> I have demons. Mask has a contract with me if he wants to go to hell. <laughs> uh, 
that one. And you got the one for yourself, right? You know how to set that yeah, up? Yeah. Okay, cool. And you said you were telling Cynthia to move over by zero? Yeah, so she could be uh, covered by the Shining Lord. Alrighty. So, uh, Raphael takes a look at the three uh, suitcases that are there. And he says, which one do you want me to look at? Go through all three just in case. Okay. So, he opens the suitcase on the left. And inside of its contents is a very large and heavy looking bag of gill. Henry, stop some. Bring that over here. Uh, okay. I would like to put a bomb inside the gill bag. It's okay. I'm going to examine it. Uh, roll investigation. Investigation. All right. You examine the bag of gill. You examine it very thoroughly. I'm assuming you're not physically touching it, too, yes? No. Okay. Do all laugh if you got set on fire. So you examine the bag of gill, and you come to find out that it is, that it is just a giant bag of gill. This giant bag of gill holding exactly 68,000... No, no. 69,150 gill. Nice. Fifty nine thousand one hundred and what? Fifty gil. Oh, look at that. You get to keep gil for yourself. <laughs> or is that for the whole party? The uh, whole party. Well, I was going to say that it, it that this can be up to Henry if he wants to divvy up uh, the guild with everyone, but if you want to go with that, sure. So, me and Rick will split the money half and half. Okay. If you want to. doesn't want to come near yeah. me. <laughs> that's, that's your decision? Yes. Alright. Alright, let's, let's do the math. One half of 69,150. 3,400. 64,000. 3400 <laughs> and that would be that's 48 48075 48 that's not right Let's pick up a calculator uh that number divided by two is thirty-four five seventy-five. Yeah. He said forty-eight. And we all make mistakes. <laughs> hey, uh, that was a big difference. <laughs> oh, I did six. Okay, yeah, I did sixty. I did ninety-six. That's my bad. Damn. There. Sixty-nine. One fifty. Yeah, sixty nine one fifty divided by two is thirty four five seven five. Yeah, I did fucking ninety six. <laughs> Keep on going, Raph. All right. I'm hoping for one of them to actually be an explosive. That's the reason I have him doing it. So he opens the suitcase in the middle, and in it there is a a book. And a whetstone. But this one in particular is in the shape of a ball. And it is glowing pearl white. Bring that over. <laughs> I would say give the book to Henry since he's a spellcaster. And give the whetstone to Mel. Investigate both of them. Okay. Uh, uh, again? Hmm... 
Here, you... how about you investigate the book and I'll investigate the whetstone? Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. You should come on over closer to me, buddy. At least slightly. Sure. Or you could have. Never mind. No, it would make more sense because we're investigating the thing together. Uh. Okay. Uh, so we're both doing investigation rolls again? Yes, but this time. Uh, Henry, you roll investigation and intelligence. Okay. And Yashua, you roll okay. investigation and perception. Okay. And I will roll my own dice. Twenty and thirty. All right. All right. So, Henry, upon examination of this book, you can feel a very large pulse of energy emanate from this book, <laughs> and. When you think that you have done all there is to be done with it, it attaches itself to your hip, not in a parasitic kind of way, but a magical holster specifically for this book appears on your left thigh. Ooh. Cool. It's, it's the <laughs> Azure Grimoire. <laughs> and uh, that large pulse of magic energy you feel your magic tech go up but uh you decide to place it on the ground and that burst of energy is gone but when you put it back on your thigh it returns oh cool so you now have an accessory that i will give you what it does and you open the contents of the book and attempt to read what may be inside and all of it is completely illegible to you. You cannot understand anything that is in this book. Uh. But this is what you will Maybe be you getting. Will Serious book. Pack of his Jeez, oh, 200 magic attack is a lot. That changes a lot. <laughs> 200 magic attack plus question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Dude, dude, what if you found a fucking ultimate weapon? <laughs> As for Yashua, as I open the wrong sheet, my bad. I open the wrong one again. Uh, as for Yashua, you examine the ball-shaped stone, and you feel a pulse of cold, but also warmth at the same time, and you move it around your hands a bit and you can see a type of dusting coming off of it not as if it's ancient old and decrepit but almost magic like and you toss it in your hands a couple times well you toss it between your hands almost like you're flipping a quarter between the two hmm. and Rosalia notices this and she says is that what was in one of the cases? And she slowly approaches you and hits a hard U-turn around Henry to get a closer look at it. U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's really smooth, cold and warm to the touch. Uh, this is this is a moonstone, or. Specifically, this is a this is a moonstone in the shape of no. I'm getting excited. Let me calm down. This is a whetstone with the properties of a moonstone. D 
do you um, want to take a guess at what a moonstone is? A piece of cheese. <laughs> ignores, um... Oh my god, my dad. It ignores, um... What Henry just said. And just... I know what a whetstone is, but what is a moonstone? Um... So... A moonstone... Which are very rare, might I add. Um, they can potentially bestow any conceivable magical property onto a singular physical thing that exists. So, for example, um, if you wanted to, I don't know, make your hair sparkle in the sun, if you shave that down and apply it to shampoo, you could do that. Um, uh, as a more practical thing, since you very much enjoy your weaponry, if you wanted to use that to enhance one of your weapons to do God knows what you wanted to do, uh, it would take quite a while, but it would be possible. Though, really? yes, though it is, <laughs> it is limited to what the owner of the item is capable of magically, and mm -hmm. it cannot ex exceed the potential physical capacity of the item itself. So, you cannot take your handgun or handguns and make them into giant pirate ship cannons. That's not going to be possible. So there is oh, a limitation. No. Yes. But, if you wanted to make it so that one bullet had the properties of, let's say, eight bullets, that would be possible. <laughs> or... Can I just use the item and wait? That, that sounds like a one-time use. Well, um, most of them, this one included, are one-time uses. Um, I've only ever seen one other variant of this, but I never had the chance to use it for myself. Though, um, and this was back when I was with the cult, they can be cultivated far 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 north of this region um uh, they they call it the uh was it she rummages through her belongings and she pours <clears throat> out uh a picture and says ah yes they call it the 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 azure front it is very cold but that is a place of highly concentrated, untapped magical energies. Yeah, Shoah is thinking to himself. I'll hold on to this for now. Okay. I have a good idea what to do with this. And lastly, uh, Rafael, he looks at this, do you, do you want me to open this last one? Henry looks at him, nods. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that one, he finds a bunch of different uh, weapon fragments, armor fragments, uh, potions, items, etc. And a note. Bring me that note. <laughs> he folds the note into a small paper airplane and he throws no. it over to you. Do I have to roll something to catch the airplane? Yes. <laughs> uh, Please. You can roll side of hand. 
I want to snatch the paper airplane before he can. <laughs> uh, if you want to try doing that, you can roll a side of hand too. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, just as the note makes its way over to Henry, Yashua intercepts it from them. It intercepts it from him. <clears throat> and the note reads, and before you begin to read it, you notice that all of the letters on it are glowing just a bit. Oh, pretty. Okay. Henry just rolls his eyes and walks over to the final chest and collects all the things from it. So the note reads, and you can kind of hear a voice in your head as you read it. <clears throat> ah, hello! Um, this is your... Well, I don't really know if we can be considered uh, friends, but um, this is a note from Cora. Hi, how's it going? Um, these containers are items that belong to your friends, uh, of which you haven't seen in quite a while, and uh, unfortunately, as much as I'd rather not say this, they are no longer with us. What? There's like a shock expression on his face after he's reading that. Rip. Yes, they, um, they decided to go about things their own way and they a bit off more than they could chew and I heavily advise them to rejoin with you all but the more they refuse the more they decided to try and handle things on their own idiots I will not go into detail about how or when they passed just know that unfortunately they aren't here anymore and through some mischievous methods, of which I did some meddling that I have no reason to be doing as I am once again stepping outside of my boundaries, I was able to retrieve some of their belongings, and even though it took quite some time, by the time you get this note, this set of containers should have made it to you. I know not when the others will arrive, but they will in due time. Um, my condolences, as as much as I would love to, once again, overstep my boundaries and bring them back. Uh, unfortunately, as I'm sure you've come to realize by now, when someone in this dimension passes away and by pass away I mean when they are dead uh, there is no bringing them back by most conventional means as the ways of the dark arcane arts are a blight that are well that are being taken care of by you and yours hopefully but when someone dies, there is no coming back. And, um, I wish that they didn't pass the way that they did. Um, continue along on your way and keep them in memory. And when you finish reading the note, it slowly begins to fade away. Can I investigate the items that are inside the case? Uh, yes, but you don't have to roll anything for it because uh, what? one of the boxes. Oh, my neck. Uh, one of the boxes contains a very large number of. Um, Ethers, well, specifically, uh, 
Mega Ethers and Mega Potions. The other items are like like bottles of water, various juices, food items that surprisingly haven't spoiled. They still look as if they were bought fresh out of the market. And I will give you the exact number of uh, ethers and potions as I type it out. Okay. Uh, Drava notices Yashua's change of expression and <gasps> excuse me she walks around uh, Raphael and Henry and asks him what's wrong Yashua snaps his fingers and just dismantles all of the shining words <sighs> Yasha just stares at the ceiling for a moment and sighs. Do we know what happens if I touch a demon? Uh, remember that uh, parasite demon that y'all fought? The yeah. one that turned into acid. Yeah, that was only one type of demon, but you can test that theory at your earliest convenience if you wish to do so. I don't want to hurt Rav. <laughs> and there's only one way to find out. Dreva, okay. I, wait, 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 um... wait. So I go to the mass demon. Oh no. I request if he could teach me that illusion spell. <laughs> I have not forgotten, buddy. <laughs> That's just an excuse to use so you could grab his hand. Yes, after I learn it. Then I could send him back home like he wanted. <clears throat> uh, have you gotten any closer to figuring out how to get me home? Uh, I'll test something. But it might be a little painful. I'm going to ask you this as calmly as I can. Are you going to touch me physically? Henry just rolls his eye. <laughs> Through Mask's eyes, where they should be on his face you can see them flash red for a very quick second before returning to their and he puts his hands up you want to go home don't you <sighs> this is why i don't do business with humans what are you gonna do touch your hand I need to test something. And what are you trying to test? To see if this demonic curse affects demons. <sighs> Fine, I guess. Before you do that, before you do anything else though, please roll persuasion. I want to learn that spell first. Persuasion. If you fill that role, I want to see you get punched. Actually, no, getting punched still involves physical contact. I'm going to fail it. Oh. Still a low roll. I uh -uh, don't assume it is. Okay. Uh, your words take quite a bit of time to get through to him, but he rejects your notion of physical touch and instead creates an illusion of himself that you can interact with. I want to learn that. I want to make an illusion. Touch that yes, instead and see what happens. Henry touches the illusion. Alright. 
So, upon making contact with the illusion, the illusion of mask, at first, nothing happens. But, not too long after that, let's say about 30 or so seconds, uh, a purple question mark appears in the center of his forehead. And then 30 seconds after that, the illusion adopts a strange purple glow and it fades away. But the residual energy left behind flows into Henry and Henry, if you are missing any MP, you regain 50 points. I have full MP and HP. Okay. Because they're all earlier. And so that's... Making physical contact lets him siphon HP from enemies? Oh, I could siphon demon MP. I want to learn illusions so I can just summon illusions and siphon. Oh, that's broken, dude. <laughs> Not really, because it costs to summon the... It would only give me very little. My mana charge would give me more probably than that 50. Yeah, but that kind of sounds like a useless skill, because think about it. You're not going to be cursed for much longer. It's illusions. It's not a useless skill. I could literally just make the illusion do things. No, what I'm saying is you touched and cursed oh, the no, illusion. I'm... No, no, no. That's temporary. I know that. But I just wanted to see the effects on demons. What it does if I touch them. I, I honestly don't know if you call that illusion a demon. It's an illusion. It's not biological. It's Unless not demon magic. Otherwise. Well, um, so, hmm. That's... You want the short explanation or the long explanation? Explanation, if, buddy. If, if you want to avoid opening a can of word, uh, worms, then just go with a fucking short explanation. I'm the long explanation. Okay. Well, since there's two varying opinions, I'll cut it to you like this. What just happened was something that I hadn't seen in approximately 232 years, 8 months, 3 weeks, 2 days, and 3 seconds. This wow. curse thing, whatever you did, allows you to, in a very basic level, dispel illusions and siphon some of the energy spent and it goes back to you Ooh. however because I mentally keep track of my own illusions you sent it somewhere oh, and God. I'm it's going to take me some time to find it but Henry turns around and looks at the portal he jumped through before. I'm going to assume that you can send them a decent distance away from you after you come into contact with it. Now, uh, respectfully, leave me alone until I find where you sent my illusion. And just shuffles his feet away. <laughs> and goes and looks at the portal. <laughs> Yasha isn't even paying attention of what's what's happening over there since he's too caught up on the losses of party members. I don't know those party members, so I don't really care. I have no emotional connection to them. Hmm. Fair enough. Henry just makes little spike pebbles and throws them at the portal. <laughs> uh, Drava, she 
acknowledges that you are uh, emotionally distraught at the losses and she she places a hand on your shoulder and lets you um, grieve in peace as she walks back over to where Alora is floating beside Mel. Yeah, I still haven't touched Alora. <laughs> I just sigh. The time for grieving will come later. Now's not a good time. Uh, Zero, he... He walks over to you. And he says, hey man. Uh, if you need a moment or two, go ahead and take it. Even though this operation is important, I'm not going to deny you your right to grieve. Don't worry about me. I've lost some friends and comrades before. This isn't new to me. Just wasn't expecting that to happen so soon. All right, all right, just, uh, if you can handle this, bud, I know you can. I just nod at him. All right. Okay. <clears throat> oh, Henry goes over to Rosaria and asks her if she could read the book. On his waist. Uh, she. Or even give a name of what the book is called instead of mysterious book. She takes a a good long look at it, and she is attempting to magically decipher what it says, but even to her, she can't understand it ooh so it's out of even her league hmm Henry looks at it and says maybe it's something like Cuban's book Rosalia asks yeah. you who's Cuban the star keep in the district oh I don't know go I'll ask him or something. Henry's eyes light up and he looks at Yashua. Let's go see Cuban! <laughs> Before that, I also have this uh, in my inventory here. This ornate crystal and unidentifiable jewel. Are you showing them to Rosalia? Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Upon you showing those to her, she says, By Gaia's great name, where did you get those? Spoils of war. Did you ever bother, um, examining what they were? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Uh, um, well, um, let's just say that those are summoning catalysts, specifically elemental summoning catalysts. Um, they can be activated in one of two ways. You could bind them to your very spirit, and even though it's going to be very taxing, uh, call upon them when the situation is needed. 
or you can pray to well whatever god you believe in if any at all and if you are heard the corresponding deity will come down and they will be able to answer i believe three questions and after that the gem will lose its power and become useless Okay, then. How so... many crystals do we have of those? I only have... I only have the, uh... The, uh, the unidentifiable jewel and the ornate crystal. I have that. I have the unidentifiable jewel and chaos fragments. The ornate crystal was the one where you get to, uh... The three, the three questions, or that was the unidentifiable one. Uh, that is the unidentifiable one. And for flavor text, uh, it is in the center of it, circulating uh, every conceivable color in existence. Wow, oh, it's a rainbow. Wait, so we could summon yeah. any entity? Um, not particularly any entity. Just the one that hears you, if any at all. As some of them can be very aggressive and stingy, but that's just how those creatures work. Uh, Henry shows her the emerald, Odin's emerald, and asks, Is there any way for me to communicate with Odin? Um, based on what I know about Odin, um, you don't talk to him, he talks to you. <laughs> and, um, I'm not entirely sure what this shard is supposed to represent, as he is historically known to refuse the crystal form transference method as he prefers to walk whatever plane of existence he's on as his own being him and Slape near his horse Henry just looks at the crystal and says thank you for coming last time and puts it back in his pocket alright I have so many fucking crystals in my inventory that I have no idea what they do. Okay. Henry shows her the ten chaos fragments. Is there any way we could reform this? Um... I... I'm not... sure. I don't really... Well, it's been a long time since I've refined and reformed any fragments of sorts. Oh, I have so many gems and everything in my items. Oh, uh, yeah. The chaos fragments. Cynthia might be able to help you since that's more her field of expertise than it is mine. Henry skips over to Cynthia. But yeah, leaving so it... at least a foot like a meter away <laughs> saying Cynthia I need your help <laughs> Yasha is just looking at the 11 corrupt crystals he has I'm all like the hell do I do with these again uh, I'm going to do um Henry's interaction with Cynthia first that cool okay all right mm -hmm. uh you want me to do what with these? Reform them. Okay. Reform them into what? Into their original form. <laughs> uh. I mean, I can do something with them. It's gonna, it's gonna take a couple of hours, but. That's fine. Yeah, uh. Where did you get all these chaos fragments from, anyway? 
We won't talk about that. <laughs> Excuse the spoils of war. We might have killed a couple things and collected them. Um, Henry just dutes his two little pointer fingers together. <laughs> oh my god. Well, whatever you say, I guess. I would like to make a staff out of it. Is that okay, Zeril? So they're standing beside each other. Um. Bring me whatever materials you want to be part of the staff, and I can I can get one of my I don't want to call them workers because it's kind of derogatory. I can get one of my assistants to put it together for you, as I am. Um, well, as you can see. A bit too busy to make weapons myself. Yeah, we have those ten corrupt crystals. <laughs> eleven, in my case. You have eleven out of ten. And you said that to say... To Cynthia. What are these? Uh... Well... Um... On a surface I level... I have 11 corrupt. Yeah. On a surface level, they are, uh... They have some pretty crazy energy going on inside of them. Uh, but... With... As many that you have... Uh... If I begin a refining process... I can... Use them to cancel out each other's negativity... And then I could... Hmm. Hey, Zell, uh... Give me the key to your workshop. What? Why? So I can make this... Into a staff? For Henry? Because he asked? Oh. Henry claps. Yeah, sure, whatever, take it. <laughs> so dispensive for a shop. <laughs> Just, uh, don't mess with anything, and she cuts them up. I swear to God, if that place looks like another hurricane went through it, I am going to hurt you. But you'll be hurting yourself at this. I don't care. You need to keep that place clean, damn it. Okay, fine, whatever. Bitch. Heard that. And? Uh, want to see what happens if I put this blood shard in the acid container. So, I'm assuming that you are handing your stock of crypt crystals to Cynthia, yes? Yes. All 11 of them. Alright. Uh, Yashua, are you doing that too? Uh, I'm gonna hold on to mine. Okay. <laughs> so you hand her the chaos shards and the corrupted crystals. <gasps> oh, excuse me. She takes them, and she uh, she puts them in a magic container. Since you physically touch them, and she doesn't want to run the risk of being corrupted herself. And she begins to think about what she is going to do with them, or rather, how she's going to craft them. Hmm. I want to test my corruption a little bit more. Let's see what else I have in my inventory. Uh, as you do that... Oh, I have the two blood-stained blades, the knives. Can I give those to Zeril? Before you do that... Please give me a wisdom saving roll. Oh, they could be infected. Oh. oh, no, no, no. I already know what's happening here. Wisdom saving roll. It's my best friend. Hmm. <laughs> well, um... You want the bad news? Yes. 
You wrote a 15, I wrote a 16 on my side. Like these. So, once the daggers are in your hand, you hear Diablos speaking to you. You wanna have some fun? You wanna... You wanna start some shit? Cut him. Do it. Oh. Oh no. And against your will, you feel your arms very slowly raising up in a manner to attack Zero. Can I scream? To Zero to move? Yes. Okay, what do I have to do? Um, make that a, just do a regular wisdom roll, not a save, just a regular wisdom roll. Okay. So I, I was hoping to shoot the knife out of his hand, but okay. It's two knives. <laughs> so you shout at Zero to move out of the way, to which he hears you. And he grabs Cynthia by the arm, and he backsteps onto the stage area. As you very quickly and aggressively swing at the air. Oh, thank god. I stayed at least a meter away prior to this all. And once your arms stop shaking and glowing, you once again have control of your arms. But, I just dropped the blades. <laughs> yeah, you, you dropped the blades. Shaking. And the mark on your forehead grows ever so slightly more purple. I just dropped to my knees and grabbed my head. Roselia said... Oh, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Roselia begins subsequently panicking as without a moment's haste grabs a series of sheets of paper from her inner row pocket and she throws them on the floor around you I need three constitution saves from you please from who? Henry hey? yep Oh, that's not safe for my bathroom. This one. That. One. Two. Three. Uh, Rick, Sergio left the truck lights on. Did he? Okay. Four ways, yeah. Alright, thanks. I'll go tell him. He's gonna kill the battery. It's okay, we have replacements. All right. So with those rolls, uh, the pain that is searing through your body as a result of the curse ever so slowly progressing through you gradually begins to fade away, and the negative energy that is seeping out of your arms is instead flowing into the talisman papers on the floor. And before long, the pain completely subsides and you are once again on your feet and when everyone looks at you to make sure you're okay mm -hmm. instead of seeing you they see Diablos very quickly flash above their heads and then the illusion fades away this is starting to get annoying <sighs> Roselia, she calms herself down. She says, ah, good thing I had those on hand, but now I have to make more of them, and that's going to take at least a day. Henry asks if he can make them too, or learn to make them. Uh, if and when we get this curse removed, I can teach you how to make them, but as of this moment, that's not going to be possible, because it 
requires a high degree of holy elemental type of magical energy. And with what you've got going on inside you right now, you won't even be able to finish the first inscription on the paper. Unfortunately. Henry picks up one of the talismans off the floor and sticks on his head. Um. I know it's going to sizzle out or something. Well, no, it's, nothing is happening. Rosalie is just looking at you in a extremely confused state. I just He's want to really hang bright. out. <laughs> Yashua explains to uh, Rosalia, yeah, he's not the brightest. I yeah. heard that. <laughs> I, I seem to have noticed that. Anyways, Rosalia, there was something I wanted to ask you. Yeah, what's up? About this entity, Diablos. Once we get it out of the once we get him out of them, or if we ever could. Is it possible to permanently destroy him so we could avoid this ever happening again? Not just to him, but to anyone else. Um... As much as I would like to say yes and have that be the end of it, in order to, as far as I know, be rid of him permanently not only do you have to defeat it in combat you also need to track down the physical location of where the curse was first created and once you get there um, you need to Subsequently, uh, burn it to the ground. But it could be, it could be around the corner. As an example, it could be around the corner. It could be hundreds and hundreds of miles away from here. It could probably be a a a house or a tavern or an establishment that you've already been to before and you didn't know. It could be, hell, it could be a stack of cards. We don't, I don't know where and what it is, but in order to get rid of him permanently, you need to defeat him and destroy his place of origin. However, I will say that defeating him in combat will lock him into a multi-century long slumber up until someone decides to bring him back. Okay. You see how he's emanating this negative energy because of Diablos. Is there a way to use that as a catalyst to track it down? Uh, that I don't no, uh, but there's always a way to try. Henry looks at them a little faster. <laughs> Shut up, I'm trying. Hold on. I think I think I might know someone that could give us some answers. Gonna drag this fucker into the oh, center of the room. Hold on, someone's at the door. I think it's your dad again. <laughs> Alright. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. So yeah, I drag this fucker into the center of the room and... And I'm just holding this guy by the hair. Like, I have no mercy for this guy. Oh, jeez. Uh, is he conscious? He will be uh, in a second. <laughs> Henry I don't know. Henry Lock cast... Him up, electrify him. No, no, I'm not going to shock him. I'm going to gear him. So he... So he's... I mean, look... 
How much health does he have at the moment? Is he healed or is he not? He, he has 6k HP, dude. Okay, so time for the shocky shocky time. So I'll use Jolt then. Uh, where... Are you aiming this anywhere particularly on his body? Just nubs. <laughs> Say one more time. His nub legs. <laughs> oh god. Okay. That's painful. Uh, he immediately jolts awake. Haha, <laughs> jolt. Uh, he jolts awake from the pain. And he... He he looks around and very quickly realizes that uh, there's next to no way he's getting out of the situation. Hey there, buddy. I lean real close to him because I'm just holding him by the head. There's some questions I would like to ask you. He does not verbally respond, but his eyes are saying that he doesn't want to answer you, but he's realizing that he has to. Listen, oh. I'll be brief. I'm not a fan of torture tactics. I am. But I will but I will kill you in the most excruciating way possible. Do I make myself clear? He nods. Good. Now, I thrust him in front of Henry, but like without making f physical contact to Henry. Do you do you know who casted this curse on him? I Henry shows the giant eye. And upon seeing the mark of Diablos on your forehead, all color in his face is gone. And he begins uh, shaking in primal fear over what he's looking at. But he answers you. And he says, I know not of the one who cast this curse and brought that genuine demon into existence once again. Mm. I have a disappointed look on my face. Henry jolts him again. That's not the answer we want. Rude. Hey, keep in mind I'm holding him, so you might jolt me too. You're not. We did this before. My jolt does nothing to you. It sucks. <laughs> you have electric immunity, remember? Resistance. Yeah, mine is very low compared to yours. Uh, well, the thaumaturgist shrieks in pain at being jolted again and he says I tell you the highest truth of what I know mm. can we transfer the curse to somebody else that's a good question are you asking me that or him yeah him no. No, 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 not him. He probably doesn't know. What about Rosalia? Rosalia might know this question. Okay, okay. B before I can... Define transfer. Not on off him. Of, off mm -hmm. me onto somebody else. Nope. <laughs> okay. So he doesn't know where... Who... Casted the curse. Does he know the location that it was casted? You want to ask him that? Yes. Go ahead. So I ask him, do you know where the location it was casted? 
he says that the point of origin that he is he is going to assume where it is is one of the <clears throat> one of the uh, sacrificial altars that is in the uh, cult's possession of which he does not know the specific one but that is his best educated guess at where it is Demons. Okay, so he doesn't know the specific one, but that means that there are locations that he there knows. There are locations that he might know. And we have the two demons. We could start there. Uh, I ask Mask to come over, and if he knows anything about these uh, ritual areas. Um. So first off. I'm going to say that I know of one, and that one was actively being destroyed as I was being summoned here. We could scratch that one off the list then. Yeah, there was uh, some bastard cloaked in all red, and he had a cannon, sword, whatever thing, and he was kicking people's ass, but then he just left after he took a couple things. Do you know um, if any, of, any of these portals lead to that chamber, to any of those locations? You want to drag him around to all the portals? Joshua? Because uh, there's three well, we, portals in the room. You well, said. we do know that Diablos came from this one. Yeah, that's the thing. But Remember, there was that wizard, too, that you were fighting that was casting that spell. Yeah, but he, he was opening the portal. He wasn't exactly summoning. <laughs> Maybe we can figure it out from the portal. That's That's really the only thing. Alright, gonna drag this fucker over here then. Alright. Don't stick him in. <laughs> so, you <clears throat> take him over to the portal. I'm assuming you're putting his face to the, as close to the portal as you can, yes? Oh, yeah, I want him to peek inside. Okay. Uh, what he sees on the inside. What he describes is different from when you first looked at it in your Eidolon state. And that first description was chest. that there was a mirror reflecting that of a treasure chest. And what you now know to be the hidden wire. But what he describes this time is... A room full of skulls, uh, other cultists, and some people unfortunately shackled to the wall. But he doesn't describe it as being an unfortunate circumstance for them. But there is no description of the uh, marking on the floor that cursed Henry. There are prisoners on the other side of the portal. Though, is it safe to go through that portal? Because fucking Henry got cursed the first time around. What the fuck's gonna happen to someone else if they jump in? They're head through. <laughs> we got all the information we can from him, so. No, we still have the other two portals here. Okay, we'll do it then. 
I notified Zero about the about the scene inside the portal. He is appreciative of the information that you relayed to him, and he spends no time wasted in organizing a team to find that particular location. I would love to jump in and just, you know, crash the party, but... It's the worst the that could happen crossing. if I jump in. I'm already cursed by one of the worst. Oh mm. yeah, you could get cursed twice. Let's see what happens. You can test that theory at your earliest convenience. Hey, before that, let's figure out what's inside the other two portals. And then, and then you could just hop scotch in there. <sighs> so, uh, I put this guy in front of the portal again. And I kindly, and when I say kindly, I kind of squeeze his head a little bit and ask what he sees. Okay. Through this portal that is a varying array of different blues and such, what he describes is that there are many, many, many different test tubes containing liquids of almost every conceivable color that you can think of. All the reds, all the blues, greens, browns, purples, etc. He describes them as experimental infusion drugs. And he says that the green one in particular is one that wildly enhances the magical capacity of the one that consumes it only if they have received a demonic transfusion of blood. Otherwise, it will cause whoever drinks it immense pain and it is a form of instant poison to them. And when he says that... I look that, at these two. I look at these two when he says that. <laughs> yep. When he, when he says that, you immediately recall the adverse effect that Mel and Perry had when they consumed the liquid. Being cursed by a demon and having demon blood are two separate things, right? Yes. I never tested it. What would happen if I drank it? You're not augmented, banana. Yeah, but I still have demonic... <sighs> it's not biologically changing you. Let's carry on. Drag this fucker over here. Henry comes for the adventure. Now, <laughs> I say this. This portal gets my attention because I see these nice little skulls inside them. Like, I'm just looking at the detail of the design of the portal. Mm -hmm. This one, this portal looks more dangerous to me. This one looks like it takes us somewhere. It looks like a summoning. This is, he, he describes, <clears throat> this is what is known amongst our people as a Hellgate. Mask. One way in, one way out. Or, rather, if you go in yeah, as a mortal, out. you do not come out. If you come out as a demon... You may go back through it once only, and then it will close. Okay. I, I think... personally okay. do not know where this one leads, but I can tell that whoever was conjuring this was one of our, our one of our chieftains, as only the chieftains are capable of making portals of this strength. So to say. You want to test the theory and throw him in? <laughs> uh, I'm going to hold on to him for now. I I relay this to Mask and to Raphael in case they want to go back whenever they want to. They could just simply take this portal. 
And the mask is under a contract right now, so he's gonna have to teach you illusions before he goes home. He can go home if he wants. Give me the illusion spell. Exactly. He yeah. needs to teach you first. Mask. When Mask hears the gate part of that conversation, he looks over and he says, Yeah, this would definitely get me out of here, but not to the circle of hell where I belong. Uh, what? That was, was not the terms of our conditions. He it said it way back. There's more That's... than one circle of hell? That's a way back. Yeah, do you... Do you humans not have multiple circles of hell? Oh. Where I'm from, there's no such thing. What? A single one. Then where do people go when they die and they've been assholes? We re we reincarnate. We don't go to heaven or hell. There's no such thing. You yep. reincarnate? Yep. That's actually kind of cool. Huh. Some of us don't even remember our past lives. Some of us are lucky enough to remember. Wow. Yeah. I mean, here I thought reincarnation was a imp's fairy tale. Yeah, there's there's no god where we're from. Interesting. Yeah. Is that this guy saying that? No, mask. Yeah, that was mask saying that. Ah. Mask, you want to come to our dimension? Um, I don't know. One, because uh, the only other, quote, dimension I've been to that isn't the individual circles of hell is, well, here. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Plus, I, um, I, I, I do have a, a wife, and I'm pretty sure she wouldn't take very kindly to me just hopping entire dimensions and not saying anything. Do you have kids, Mask? Uh, unfortunately, my generation is not able to have children. Oh. Why not? That sounds like a personal question. Shut up, Henry. No, no, no. We could probably help Mass. Um, well... I would quest. Uh, and... Okay, before this is going to continue, I might as well tell you my actual name. <laughs> and I swear yeah. to God... Or... Well, I swear to Asmodeus... Since that is my god. If you laugh, I will no longer speak to you. If his name is Tibby, I'll be able. Is he talking to us or Henry in general? Henry specifically. <laughs> oh, fair enough. He goes with like sparkling eyes up to mask. The anime sparkling eyes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> T looks at you with the bit of disgust on his face, but he says, My name is Vivian Zen. Henry tries to hold it in so bad. Charisma save. <laughs> Please fail. If I fail, I'm going to scream out, That's a girl's name if he hits me. <laughs> Vivian Zen? Charisma save. Yep. Okay. Oh fuck, this is gonna be horrible. Ooh. Alright. Okay. You are lucky, you beat me by one. Thank god. Okay, so. Henry just screams out. So we could call you Zen. Yeah, sure, whatever. And then he, Henry lets out a big, like, puff of relief. <sighs> <laughs> Yashua is like, Vivian Zen, huh? It's a cool name. Yep. So. 
Uh, about the type of illusion demon that I am, every other generation, um, we are unable to produce children as, well, given that we are demons and such, and we typically don't have the best of luck when it comes to things. Uh, my ancestors, when they first gained their demonic illusion prowess, I suppose, they made a deal with the Herald of Illusions so that one generation is unable to control their power at the cost of being in a never-ending state of delusion for the most part but they are able to have offspring and then the generation after that one they have control over what they can do but they are unable to have offspring so you can't control your ability I I can control my abilities but the trade-off is that I can't have children I see and my wife she has been working tirelessly to not only track down the herald of illusions but to come up with a way that will allow me to have children i hear side quest i'm sorry what did you say i hear that we need to help you Excuse me? We have a contract here. But the initial agreement... It doesn't matter. We're friends now. Is that how this works? Yes. <laughs> you humans are fucking weird. It's just him. Yes, you are. Henry walks away. I don't want to hear that from somebody with a girl name. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Roll a 1d4, please. Dude, if he punches you in the back of the head, I was going to be funny. One d 4 He takes off his mask and he launches it at the back of your head like a boomerang. How much HP does he lose? Can I attempt to dodge it? 10 HP. Um, As I roll my dice, please roll dexterity. Or try to catch it. Oh. I think I want to try mask. I want to mask. No, I want to dissolve his mask. So he never has the mask again and eats himself. So, which one would that be? Dexterity still? Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm rolling the dice to see how much damage you take. And then depending on your dexterity... Oh, shit. Alright, well, you're not catching or disintegrating it. Aww. Oh, I get flung in the back of the head. <laughs> Wait, it's touching me. It's still going to get disintegrated. You don't know that. Uh, what was I? Uh, so, so, of my three dice, I rolled a collective number of 22. Oh. So, you are going to take 120 HP damage of, from him throwing his mask at you. And then when it returns yeah. to him, you... Unfortunately, do not turn around fast enough to see what he looks like without his mask on. 
Do I get to see him or no? Roll perception twice. Twice? Okay. I think I'm in the line of sight between him and King, aren't I? What? Oh, uh... Kinda, but not really. Don't worry about it. Okay. You know, oh, I, yeah. I was gonna say, you get a glimpse, but that nat one fucked you over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't see shit. Henry's big head blocked the <laughs> <laughs> big, yeah, big head, but no brain in there. Yo, facts. <laughs> <laughs> All um. that intelligence for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back in a minute. Alright. Well then, I ask this to everyone in the room. Ladies and gentlemen, would a anyone would like to ask any more questions to our fine guest here? As I'm holding him in the air by the head. By the back of the head. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Let's say that Dreva is going to speak up and she is going to ask. If she know, or if the thaumaturgist knows anything about what's going on with Yuza. Are her? Good question. As I drag, I bring him along over here where she is, and this, what was this, a containment field? Yes. A, a containment field that restricts any and all movement from her. Walk back. To which he replies that she is under a curse of what he calls the restriction of will. And up until she either dies or the mission is complete she has no free will of her own and that she is forced via the curse to do whatever the person who casted the curse on her told her to do and he also points out that it is very very strange that her true self managed to Regain the smallest bit of consciousness and attempt to fight it off. But he also says that the curse inflicted upon her is too strong for her to fight off by herself. And that she will eventually re succumb to the order she was given. That's a race against time then. Hmm. Do you know the caster who cast the curse? For this one, yes, I do. Ah. Care to share? As I, like, you know, squeeze his head a little bit when I ask that. <laughs> to that, he will say, You... And by you, he's looking over at Raphael, already killed him before he oh. could release the spell from her. So she is permanently stuck in this state. Wait, what? Raphael? Ah, uh, it was the Edge Lord, the blue hair one, wasn't it? Yep. Is there a way to get rid of? The spell without him? No, she's permanently stuck that way. Hmm. 
So would it be better off if we kill her? It's unfortunate, but we might have to. Unless Rosalia knows another method, then we won't have a choice. To that, she is going to say, uh, I've never seen a spell in this type of intricate manner, so um, I don't really know if there's anything at all that we could do, say for attempting to tamper with her already fragmented soul or in this case her free will but I would heavily advise against doing that because it well, you all can tell that she's already unstable enough and I attempt to do it I would hate to leave her like this really yeah, I want to attempt to try to put her back. Nah, don't touch her. Leave her be. I'm not touching her. I'm going to use spells. What spells do you... My arcane. No, just stand back before you kill yourself. Nope, I'm not going to. I'm going to shoot you in the who... No, as somebody who understands being controlled, I do not want her to go through that. Yeah, but you have zero knowledge on the matter, and you're going to make things worse. If you want to help, then don't get involved. And leave her in there? What other choice do we have? Do, do you want us to make her suffer some more? It's better than being somebody else's slave. Riku, do I have the knowledge to be able to do that? No, you don't. What exactly are you attempting to do here? That's the big question that I would like to know. Did this spell... the spell? Uh-huh. The only thing I could imagine you doing is using your curse and just breaking the curse with a curse. Just by touching her. I would evaporate her like that. Exactly, so that's why I'm saying don't 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 touch her. And I think I did touch her before, so it didn't work like that. Hmm. I am going to say that your knowledge of the arcane isn't at that high of a degree to attempt to dispel something like this however I will say that the negative energy that seeped out of you earlier isn't extremely similar but it is partially similar to the energy that you can see coming out of her remember do you remember when she was um writhing around in lightning that was coming from her own body and those thorns that came out of her yeah it is very by a very small margin similar to that so a double negative is a positive you think if I touch her with that? I'm not going to say yes, but I'm also not going to say no. Do you want me to attempt it? It's a gamble. Okay, Henry slams his hand right into her. Hold on, there's a containment field. Don't you think we have to disable that before we even do anything? Yeah, it's going to keep her a little bit safer in this whole matter. Well, to that, I'm I, going I to try say... not to make her evaporated soup. Well, the containment field is only restricting her ability to move. It doesn't. Yeah, I don't want her moving around while doing this. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because that could cause even worse, and I could slip and touch something I'm not supposed to be touching. All right, I'm gonna stand back for this. 
gonna drag. Oh wait, I can't drag him. <laughs> oh, hang on, I got you. As I put the wrong thing. I don't whip this. <laughs> then that. Okay. For this. I'm going to ask you to roll. And hear me out. I'm going to ask you to roll Arcana, mm -hmm. Insight, mm -hmm. and Survival. Insight and Survival, Survival, Survival. Something good for once in this campaign. That survival was pretty good. Okay. That was the wrong sheet. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. So. When you make contact with her. The immediate feeling of all of the earlier spiritual agony that she was going through you feel rush into your body and it literally courses through your veins so as you are touching you are feeling an extreme amount of pain but you manage to hold tight and you maintain the physical contact and for a very very brief moment you can see some form of creature in what appears to be an endless expanse the vision flows into your mind and after seeing that you think to yourself that what you saw may or may not be a type of spirit. It could be a ghost. It could be a wraith. You don't know what it could be. But as far as you were able to tell, it is a spirit of some kind. And from there, you cease the physical contact, but the negative energy that was seeping out of her stops. But what flowed into you was some vile, nasty shit. And I'm now Wait. going to ask you to do a wisdom save. Oh. Okay. And you bring my popcorn for this. You hear in your head Diablo speaking, but not to you. I have a conversation. He instead says, What the fuck is that? In a complete state of shock and surprise, as he is firing off question after question of what is invading your body. And then he asks you, Are you seeing this shit? I mean, she has a worse demon than Diablos. Or something. You know what's so funny? This reminds me of, uh, think reincarnation as a slime. Oh my god. I'm just blending up everything and slapping it. You gotta deal with each other. I don't care about this. And. And, um, unfortunately. Because of the nat 1 that you rolled. You internally, not out loud, you internally respond to Diablos' question 
of him asking, are you seeing this shit? Can I say one of my witty lines? <laughs> I, I guess. Uh, I'll, I'll say, yeah, I fucking see it. <laughs> <laughs> now have dinner with it. <laughs> I'll kill it. <laughs> Tell him to kill it. It's your problem now, not mine. <laughs> so, after okay. you say that, you feel a internal disturbance within your spirit. Um, please remove 100 MP and the... Which hand did you uh, touch her with? First hand. I think it was my right hand was the cursed one. Okay. Um... The hand that you touched her with, the faintest outline of the curse mark on your forehead begins to appear on your right hand. And as for the progression of the curse, uh, you now have one week, four days, and eight hours left. I lost Wait. the day. I lost Wait, did it. Day. Did it accelerate the curse or did it slow down the curse? It accelerated it. Oh no. Because he originally okay. had uh, a week okay. and a half. So, and then on my side, I count that as a week and five days. But because of the few times where he, where he failed his rolls earlier, it progressed to where it is now. So it's okay now? I'm not going to say that she's okay, but as far as uh, all the energy coming out of her and what you can see of her expression, as far as you can tell, she is no longer in any physical pain. Oh, good. Uh, do I get any pros out of this? Yes, but not now. Yes. <laughs> I just waddle over <laughs> and start drinking grum. <laughs> just start slamming them down and shit. <laughs> Anyways. That was an File interesting. That was rather interesting. So... What should I do with you? He says nothing. Except he, uh, his expression, as far as you can read it, says to let him go. But his fingers on his left hand begin to twitch. Uh, Henry looks back at them, slowly goes over to him, and burns off both of his hands. <laughs> wow. Damn. You know, I I said I wasn't a fan of torture tactics, but... No, we just don't... Fault. I just don't need him casting spells. So I just burn both of his hands off. Yeah, but what if he could cast spells with just simply saying magic words? <laughs> or mental incantations. No, no, no. I literally tell him, if you try to do something, I'm going to cut off your tongue. And that's it. And I just walk back to my seat and just keep drinking. Okay. Drunk Henry is a different Henry. He's just straight to the point and, and will kill you. All right. Well, okay. Well, if no one wants to say anything to this guy, I do have the idea what to do with him. I say this to the rest of everyone here. If they want to ask something or they want to do something to him. Henry, Henry just flags his hand to get rid of him. Uh, Dreva does not say 
anything in response to that as as she believes that you all have gotten all the information that uh he was going to get out of him didn't he have rings on his hands hmm the the mage didn't he have what rings on his hands i don't know do you want to break his fingers and take his rings? I melted off his hand, so the rings must have felt. Well, Was there any rings off his hands? I will say there is a ring. Okay, that I want fell to take to that with me. <laughs> I want that. I need another magic ring. <laughs> okay. Can I just stick it onto my finger? For that, I'm going to say no. Because when you attempt to put the finger on... The finger... Wow. When you attempt to put the ring on your finger... Uh, every time it gets close, you feel a, a... A force of resistance against putting it okay. on. Okay. I'll just keep it then. I'll find the time. I already searched this guy's body, right? Not his court. Well, when when you um subdued him in battle, uh, you took most of what he had already. But we didn't take everything off him, cause like I really want to violent, violently shake him and see what he drops. Go ahead. Um... Nothing's stopping you. <laughs> if, no, like I'm just asking it, cause like I don't want to do something that's pointless. He's not a cereal box, but. Release this toy. <laughs> I'm going to say because I'm gonna flip him upside down and just violently shake him, see what he drops. Hmm. If he drops gill, I'll be happy too. Well, you've already taken all the gill you could have off of him. Yeah, but he has, you know, all those cavities in there. <laughs> I'm just messing. Let's say <laughs> that. Uh, roll strength for the shakedown. I look at him with a smile on my face, and like you know, there's like stars on my face because I'm about to do something silly to him, and like I slowly flip him, you know, upside down. Henry just turns around with his drink and starts watching. Okay. You shake him down, and for a few seconds, nothing comes out of him, but a phone falls out and hits the ground. Ooh. He's been withholding information from us. Ah, I see. I pick up the phone, I drag him, and I toss him into the portal. <laughs> Now he has no further information. Oh, well, that's the end of that guy because he is now considered dead since he ain't coming back. You want to check the phone numbers on that phone? I'm going to check the phone. First of all, I got to check the pictures. See what kind of pictures he's hiding in. Okay. You... Do I have to roll investigation on his phone? Yes. Actually... <laughs> Better yet, I'm gonna give it to Zero because Zero is more tech savvy when it comes to the technology in this world. Okay. And while he does that, can I investigate the ring? For that, I'm going to say no because you can very clearly tell that it is uh, cursed. It's a curse string. Let's just what? add more curses. <laughs> What's up with you getting all the cursed items and getting cursed? I'm going to be the Anyways. final boss. Don't worry. I'm going to be Henry the Cursed. <laughs> uh, like the like the leader of the ring character. <laughs> Start our all over again. 
No, 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 Chris. You're going to end up being like those Lord of the Rings characters that's always end up getting shamed. Oh, And they Lord. just end up being a broken mess. <laughs> All right, anyways. Zero. Right before I toss the fucker into the portal, he dropped his phone. Maybe there's a lot of information that we could use. Oh, oh, can you get a description for the ring? Like, what is it called? So I can put it in my inventory. Just uh, put a cursed ring. Cursed ring? Yeah, for now, just leave it as a cursed ring. Sounds good. Uh, as for you handing the phone to Zero, he says, Oh, damn. That's This is, this is wonderful. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can get as much as we can out of this and maybe modify it so it can be a nice little bait and switch for our enemies but before all that the screen needs to be fixed yeah my bad it probably broke when it fell oh it most certainly did shouts out i also think she needs to see a doctor and pointing at the chamber well, we've got doctors and kyrigans here she'll be all right all right anyways Ladies and gents, I'll leave you to it. I'm gonna go to the bathhouse. Oh no, let's see Cuban first. On the way to the hotel. But, but, bathhouse. Yeah, but we can end off at the bathhouse. Let's go see Cuban first. Cuban, fine. Do you want more bullets? <laughs> I don't even argue. <laughs> Henry just whisper, more bullets. <laughs> and Yasha was like, right. <laughs> All right, so we're the best duo. I'm going to move back over over yonder. Is it uh, just us two? Uh, Drava is following with you all. Okay, by a few feet behind me. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's right. This will be the first time Drava meets our uh Even. contact. Yeah. Cuban shot was up here, right? Yep, it was around here. Yep. Let's cross the street. Control. Look both ways. Okay, look, the light's red, so let's cross. The light's red, so let's cross. <laughs> well, yeah, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> this one's green. Let's wait a minute. Henry said. <laughs> Dude, don't stand next to me. Oh, I want to see Cuban's response to my new eye. <laughs> uh, can't you wear like a bandana or something to cover that fucking curse mark? I want to read his book. When was the oh, last time we were here? It was like a few days ago, I got, right? It's before I got cursed. Yeah, 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 but like it was a few days ago, right? Oh, fuck. I don't know what his response is going to be when he sees Diablo. <laughs> He's gonna kick you out of the shop. Or piss his pants. <laughs> uh, honestly, I hope it's the former. Okay, let's go. Let's cross. But light's still green, though. Oh, screw <laughs> It's never gonna change color, buddy. <laughs> Alright. So. You Do you wanna call Cuban before we enter and let him know what's going on with me? Or just. Let me get in first and explain. Okay, I'll <laughs> wait outside. Zero, uh, not Zero. Uh, Dravo follows in behind Yashua. Just, just radio me on the communicator when it's good to come in, when he's mentally prepared. Okay. No, it's better if you wear a bandana or a hat to cover that. He, well, it's good that he knows what's going on, too. Mm, fine. Plus, hiding it doesn't stop him from seeing Diablo. Yep, that's true. Um, He'll see Diablo walking into the store. Okay, okay. <laughs> What's more scary, being told that, oh, this is coming, or hooded person with the, a giant demon creature behind him? You made your fucking told. point. Shut up. Uh, remind me, Riku, did you have already shop loaded for this or no? 
No. I, think... I, I didn't have one the first time. Oh yeah, we didn't. The first time? Is there a second time? No, no, no. The first time y'all came here, I didn't have one. Hmm. Okay. On this time? No. Oh, sad days. Okay. Role play time. I walk in the shop. Dre, what's behind me? Uh, is he just standing in front of me there, or do I have to ring the little bell to get his attention? Gotta ring the bell again. <laughs> Can I accidentally... No, no, no. I was gonna say, uh, strength roll and just smash the bell by accident. Jesus Christ! No. <laughs> Sad face. Uh, All right. so the bell rings, ring he says, bell. Just a minute, I'm coming. He, I'm it again. No, I'm kidding. He walks out to the front and says, Hey, Yashua and very attractive female companion. How you doing today? Yashua looks back. Mm, yeah, she is. Uh, yeah, we're good. Um, Quick little note. Do not be alarmed. I'm already Do alarmed. Not panic. Do not panic. Don't. Yashua thinks, yeah. Don't use your entire arsenal on him when he walks in. The fuck are you talking about? Henry has been cursed. He's outside as a precaution. Because we don't want him to walk in and you ended up blowing half of the shop just to get rid of him. Okay. What kind of curse? See for yourself. As I... Send a little text to Henry to come in. Henry enters the store. <laughs> opens the door. And just slowly walks up. Uh, Cuban. Leaving at least five meters away from Cuban. Cuban is in the process of saying, I don't know what the hell. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Yeah. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Are you... Yeah. What? How? Why? 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 I, 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 I don't know. Listen, we were in the middle of an operation. Henry thought it was a good idea to look inside a portal without any safety measures and... He... The portal. He, 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 he caught something worse than AIDS. What's AIDS? It's a, it's a virus that you don't want to have in your body. Gotcha. Sexually transmitted disease. You don't want it. Ah. Uh, oh. He uh, just looks at Yashua. This is not the same thing. <laughs> no, it's worse. Shut up. Okay. Now... My next question, uh, do you want to explain the floating treasure chest behind you? As when he points at it, you look where he's pointing, and Perry's treasure chest is somehow following you. I look at Drava. Since when that was following us? I, I don't know. I, I'm just not noticing it too. Can I open the chest to see if she's sleeping inside? Uh, you open the chest and you sure as hell do her- I do see her sleeping inside. Ah, oh, right. She probably set that magic chest to autopilot or something. I don't know. She's- she's another of party member. She likes to take long naps. Don't worry about her. She's harmless. I'll be right back in a sec. Okay. So... You've brought a cursed man into my shop. You've brought two people I've never seen before. And I'm assuming you came here for a reason. Uh, it was Henry's idea to come here. Oh. Well. I, I need to go to the bathroom. That's the thing I can go to the other color here. Uh. You know, that... I've only been there, like, twice. My 
son and I. And, um, and you didn't hear this from me, but if you tell the receptionist at the front desk that you're all here as a family, you can get the family plan and get a massive discount. Cool, I'll keep that in mind, but we don't resemble one another. I don't think they'll fly. Hey, they don't need to know that. Yeah, it just it, it, I'm, I'm just saying it doesn't take a genius to notice that we're not related. Unless somehow Henry pretends that, you know, Henry or Perry pretend that they're married or something but ah whatever hey man what they don't know won't hurt them because at the end of the day they're still getting money fair enough Drava if there is a particular item you're looking for maybe a new staff maybe some I don't know accessories or those spell books you had on, on you earlier were an interesting sight. You should check them out. Uh, as you say that to her, she is already going over uh, everything in the area. Anyways, since since we were away, did uh, did you get a new shipment in? Something interesting that could possibly get our attention. Henry asks, any new spells? Oh, welcome back. <laughs> uh, to both questions, unfortunately, no. The only thing I got that was new, I suppose, or uh, there's this new brand of snack that came out. It's like, uh, some type of weird, salty, sweet gum. Uh, that's, Interesting. That's, a, that's about it, though. Uh, that aside, so, I see that, uh, that, uh, all hell, speaking figuratively and literally, uh, broke loose in a city, because, uh, People freaking out. I can very clearly tell you guys have been fighting more than normal. And, uh, shit's getting pretty bad, huh? Yep, it's another day in paradise. Sarcasm. Yeah, well. I don't know. I've never dealt with any cult type shit before, so. That's all you guys, I'm just a utility shop at the end of the day. Henry asked uh, Cuban if he could use the magic reader on him. Uh, oh yeah. What for? See a trail for where I'm being cursed from. Uh, I mean, I guess, but can't necessarily guarantee that the machine's gonna do that. It's a, it's worth a shot, right? Yeah, and I suppose. Just give me a sec to put the damn thing on. Also, Henry, don't forget to see if he could actually figure out what that book of yours does. Yes, we'll ask him in a second first. I want my curse taken off. <laughs> Who died? Okay. So. He activate. <clears throat> he activates the magic reader. And it goes through its process for a little bit. To which it reads that your original magic stat or magic ranking hasn't changed but there appears to be an additional ranking 
next to yours that for some strange reason says Z and that is nowhere near any of his regular rankings and a lot he says okay that's fucking weird I've never seen that before what the hell is a Z supposed to mean stirs the palm off the side of his left leg and put it on top of the countertop. Maybe it's this. He uses the reader on the book <clears throat> and sure enough, that Z ranking does come back. <laughs> Alright, so you want to tell me where you got this from and uh, why it's giving me a reading I've never seen before. It's a gift from an old friend. Ah. Well, that's good enough for me, I suppose. Huh, this is... I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to tell him about Korra. This is very... Very interesting. Uh, the book and it returns to his side. Wait, do that again. That was... What the fuck? It just... Is it is it sentient? I don't know, I just got it. I don't even know what it's called. Wow. I see... Okay. So, it, it appears that this weird-ass book is not only the source of this strange reading, but every time I look at it with my reader, it's posted in such a blind light, such a blinding light, that I can't look at it for very long. Hmm. And, uh, as for that, whatever the fuck that says on the front of it, I can't read that. But, I think I know someone who does. Oh. The no, issue is that they most likely are not conscious right now. And if they are conscious, their phone probably isn't turned on. Ah, uh, um, in that case, is it okay if we take their contact information from you? Uh, you already have their contact information. Remember my, bo oh. my boss's name, Michael? Oh, okay. Yeah, you... someone else entirely. You should have... Uh, yeah, I, uh... He... Okay, wait. Before I continue. You meet someone named Greg? Yeah, I know Greg. Okay. I'm pretty sure that he... Told you about him. Yes? No? Wait, wait, wait. Before you answer that. Do you have any strange coins with you? Almost medallion like. Flashback the purple medallion I found a while back. Roll history, please. And roll history, too. Mm. Oh, you weren't here when this happened. Yeah, yeah you... I was. No, you no, weren't. What I'm talking about in. What, what I'm specifically talking about, you were not present for that. That was the one that you talked to Fanchi about the purple coin that you found from the dead person. Different coin. Yeah. Different coin. So, you rack your head for a bit, and you rummage through your belongings, and you find the coin 
that Cuban was talking about. It has some strange engravings on it, and it has the name Michael in very fine and small text on the bottom of it. Yeah, that. Um, take that to. Well, you kind of need it to get inside because it kind of acts like a key. But, uh, yeah, take that to his shop. I'll give you the directions. Wait, I think I might have. If I gave her the directions already, I'm going to give them to you again. But take, take that thing to him. He can read almost every language that has been made by life forms. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, the only issue is that combined with his delayed responses to everything, he, with as many languages as he knows, often confuses himself and he'll answer something in common speak, but think about it in Elvish language and then write something down in celestial language all uh, answering yeah. the same thing and he sometimes switches language su switches languages as he is talking verbally uh yeah the consequences of knowing multiple languages yeah i've seen it before yeah that's that's gonna be a problem That's Did Riku die? No, I'm still here. I was waiting for you to say something. Oh no. You just cut yourself off. You said that's and you just cut yourself off. Oh, well. We all make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I think I think that's all we're here for. Oh Henry, is there anything else? I want to know if Cuban has any gems or fragments in stock. Uh, for now, I am going to say no. Any armor or staffs? Uh, you look at what is available, and they all appear weaker than what you currently have. Nothing today. <laughs> no, nope. Okay. I tapped Drava's shoulder and asked, "Found anything of interest you like?" I. Uh, not really. Um. These tomes that he have, I already naturally know all of these spells, so. Huh. I don't know. You, if if his stock changes every now and then, I'm pretty sure as long as we're still in this city, uh, they have something maybe that I may want. Yeah, you're gonna have to give him some time. I don't think he's gonna get any stock where you know the city's in the middle of a war. Right, that too. Henry asks Cuban, "Do you have any materia?" Looking at. You don't know about material, dumbass. Yeah, canonically, you do not know what that is. Damn it. And as a matter of fact, I shouldn't know what it is either. Yeah, Yashua <laughs> doesn't know what that is yet either. I'm going to have to stumble across it. Nice play, though. I wish I had material right now. <laughs> I, I tried it's okay. It, it's a thought that counts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, if there is nothing else you wish to do, uh, this interaction is considered over. Alright, Cuban. I'll catch you later. Take care of yourself. Uh-huh. You, uh, you work on getting rid of that 
thing. Wow, uh, we're, uh, we're working on that. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't get spooked very easily, but when I looked at you, I nearly pissed myself. <laughs> Henry hey. just hangs his head low and just walks out of the store. I don't feel like that. Just be happy he didn't shoot at you. All right. The hotel was up north, wasn't it? Yes. All right. To the hotel we go. Into the bathhouse. <laughs> All right. Move this over yonder. And change oh, the song. Once this bastard's it. still here. He's trying to ambush us. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, damn. He got retconned. <laughs> okay, right, so, so you, the... you enter into the hotel. And you hear some good common music start to play. Uh, the yeah, no. receptionist is at the far end of the uh, entryway. Back here? Yes. I make my way over. I just float over like smooth. <laughs> Henry stays far by the entrance not to scare her. Okay. Ah. Hello, welcome back. Uh, wow, you guys look tired. Is there anything you need? Uh, we are under uh, orders by Chief to provide you with whatever it is you desire, essentially. Anything I desire, huh? In that case, bathhouse. Um... You mean the our, hot spring? Our spa? Yes. Spa. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how many of you and yours are going to be going in? As I don't really uh, see everyone here. And, um, why is there a treasure chest floating and following you all? That is a mimic, a sentient being. I'm just messing with you. That's that's just one of our party members. She's just sleeping in there. Okay, interesting. Does she know about the situation with me, or no? No, she does not. Oh God, I'll go ahead and do it. <laughs> Henry uh, up and says, what's taking so long? And upon approaching Yashua, the receptionist shrieks in genuine fear as she dives under the desk. Uh, so does that make our entrance free or? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> uh, you can hear her a blubbering mess underneath the desk uh, trying to stutter out uh, her asking what was that that she just saw ah um Henry says is that free admission I hear no shut up. That over the table <laughs> Henry stand over there before you give someone a heart attack uh. I apologize for it, and then I remember what Cuban said about family members getting a discount. I apologize for my younger brother, but he's been cursed, and we're trying to lift the curse. Okay. We're almost there. In a few days, the curse will be lifted. A few days, sir? Yes, a few days. It's not easy. If it was easy, he wouldn't be here cursed. 
Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, your that was your brother. Yes. Yeah, he's adopted. Ah. Okay. So, is it safe to say that your entire group will, at one point, join you in the spa area? Yeah, they will. Okay. How many of it? How many of there are you exactly? Uh, let's see. Riku, how many of us in the party are there? There's five of us in total, right? Yes. Well, not mm, counting Alora six, but we you don't worry about her. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. She could hide under someone's hair. Five. Okay. Um, after application of our family discount, that will be five thousand gil for all of you. Is she doing this underneath the table? Yes. She just she just grabbed the computer from the table and just used it underneath the table. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. Much obliged. I actually. I feel like I'm always the one paying for all these services. I just gave you enough money. So you... Yeah, I know. There we go. Mr. Money. Right. Here, 5,000 gil, and here's additional 1,000 for the jump scare. That is greatly appreciated, sir. Um, enjoy your time recovering, and, um, um, am I going to have to see that, whatever that was, every time I look at your brother? Yep. Uh, okay. I would say maybe next, I would say one more time, and that's it, maybe. But anyways, just try your best to ignore him. <laughs> okay, um, Enjoy the rest of your night and get some rest, sir. Yeah, thank you, and again, sorry. I got you, it feels real bad. <laughs> Alright. And on that note, session for today will end. Please get your fake sponsorships out now. There are no fake spot. Actually, this video is sponsored by me. Fuck these mobile game publishers, I'll do it myself. <laughs> Riku, I sponsor you. I'll send you money through PayPal. Bet. Alright, I am hitting the stop recording button.